We're going to continue our lecture on radiographic evaluation and classification of acetabular fractures from the OTA core curriculum lecture series version 5. Slides by Dr. Laura Blum and Jeffrey Chad Martin. I'm Saka Brahman uh, narrating these slides and we are in the third video of this uh, slide deck where we already talked about uh, normal anatomy uh, and um, radiographic lines in the first video and then we talked about um, letronel classification and then went over all the elementary types in the last video and in this third video we're going to go through the associated types so first associated type is the posterior column with associated posterior wall fracture so this is a combination of two elementary patterns right the posterior column fracture the posterior wall fracture and when you put those together you have the associated posterior column with posterior wall um, this is something that will look a little bit like that. It's frequently associated with a femoral head dislocation. And you have to be careful that you truly have one of these and not, for instance, just a very large posterior wall fracture. But in fact, you do have uh, what you can identify is this fracture line coming through the obturator foramen from usually the sciatic notch down. And then you also have a, a posterior wall fracture in addition to that. On the AP x-ray, you'll see a disruption of the ilioischial line because of that posterior column fracture. Um, you may sometimes see a posterior column component that's minimally displaced and not as readily seen. You may see the posterior wall fracture, depending on how displaced it is uh, on this. And the um, because of the posterior column fracture, that issue pubic ramus is usually fractured and the iliopectineal line, the black arrowheads, is intact. On the obturator oblique view, you're going to very nicely see the posterior wall fragment, which is this fracture fragment over here, shown by the white arrow. Uh, it best delineates the nature of the inferior exit point of that posterior column fracture. So here you're getting a nice view of the obturator foramen, so you can kind of see where that fracture exits with the white arrowhead. And then again, you have an intact iliopectineal line, the black arrowhead, because it doesn't involve the anterior column. Iliac oblique view, again, we're looking at the left hip. You're going to see a displacement of that posterior column fragment, which is a white arrow. You can see that belongs all the way over here. Uh, you're going to see disruption of the greater sciatic notch at that level uh, frequently. And um, posterior wall fracture might be a little hard to see. It might be superimposed on the roof of the acetabulum, shown in that black arrow. So on CT scan, um, you will see the posterior column fracture. Uh, you will see the posterior wall fracture. You may have marginal impaction. Um, and uh, it's difficult to tell just on one axial image um, what your fracture is, but here you can see that posterior column fracture extending where that blue line is. Um, so when you see a posterior wall, but then also seeing that disruption further down, and then certainly through the obturator foramen, you have to be cued that maybe we're dealing with posterior column, posterior wall. Transverse and posterior wall is a somewhat common fracture pattern as far as associated types go. And again, you have, remember your sort of inverted Y, um, uh, configuration. And when you have that, um, you remember the transverse fracture line runs from anterior to posterior right across. And then you also, and then with the transverse component, you have the transtectile, juxtatectile, infratectile uh, subtypes. Uh, that applies here as well. But then you also have a posterior wall fracture. So on the AP x-ray, the teardrop is the only remaining intact radiographic landmark. Uh, the obturator ring is typically intact. Um, the issue of pubic segment is driven medially by the femoral head. So in these cases, like a transverse fracture, you often see that medial displacement of the femoral head taking the issue of pubic segment with it, right? And uh, this is sort of your intact segment. Obturator oblique will show posterior wall fragment size and displacement. You can certainly see your femoral head subluxation and you'll notice that the obturator ring is intact. Iliac oblique is going to show that transverse fracture component uh, disrupting the ilioischial line, exiting the greater sciatic notch. Um, the uh, posterior wall fragment may or may not be well seen here. It's usually superimposed 
on that roof. And then on CT scan, you're going to see the posterior wall fracture, and then you're going to see this possibly vertical fracture orientation. It's a little hard sometimes to get a good look at the transverse component on the axial CT because sometimes the fracture line is uh, to some extent in plane with your axial slices depending on the pelvic um, tilt. So anterior column and posterior hemitransverse fractures are common in elderly patients. Um, you will see something that looks like this. So frequently the anterior column fracture extends high uh, and then you have instead of a transverse, you know, excuse me, instead of a transverse, let's just say like this, you have the hemitransverse, which is shown right here, right? So you have the anterior column with posterior hemitransverse. Um, so in, in, in most of these, the anterior column is really you know, more involved in, uh, than just the anterior wall itself. And primarily, there's more displacement of the anterior column than there is of the posterior hemitransverse component. So on the AP x-ray, you're going to see uh, iliopectineal line disruption. You may have medial subluxation of the femoral head. So this is a very common geriatric fracture pattern. The ischial line, if you look at it very carefully, is oftentimes fairly preserved, although there's that hemitransverse component. On the obturator oblique iliopectineal line, definitely disrupted. Femoral head follows the anterior column. And, uh, you know, especially with the elderly patients, you will often see some impaction in the dome, and it's a, it's a poor prognostic sign. Iliac oblique is definitely going to show disruption of the posterior column here, um, fracture exiting through the sciatic notch, um, and um, it demonstrates involvement of the ilium when the anterior column portion extends into it. So a lot of times when you have that, like you've shown in the first schematic, that, that fracture line coming here, you're going to see that anterior column fragment going through the um, iliac wing, and the classic anterior column posterior hemitransverse pattern. So on CT scan, what you're going to see is that anterior column has that typical coronal orientation. It's often somewhat comminuted. Uh, and then um, the posterior hemitransverse pattern uh, on the axials, you're going to see it extends posteriorly from the anterior, from the coronal anterior column fracture. And frequently the anterior column is more disrupted, uh, displaced than the posterior column. So what about the T-shaped or T-type fractures? Well, in this case, it's again a transverse fracture. So instead of a transverse posterior wall, this is transverse uh, with a vertical limb. So literally it forms this T. Um, so in some ways, it's a little bit like, you know, if you have an anterior column posterior hemitransverse, but um, similar, but a little different. And the transverse component, again, has you have to describe as a transtectal, as a juxtatectal, as an infratectal. And then the, um, the vertical fracture line may have a variant where it, 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 it comes, comes down the middle or it comes this way or it comes this way. It tends not to change your management that much. The T-shaped fracture on the AP x-ray uh, always is um, going to show something that looks a little bit like a uh, transverse fracture on AP. Uh, where you have um, displacement, medialization of the head, uh, ilioischial line um, is disrupted. It may appear somewhat duplicated. The obturator ring is disrupted, which is different than just the transverse fracture. So that's a hint that maybe you have a T-shaped fracture. Obturator oblique view should really dis demonstrate disruption of that anterior column, and you should be able to see that vertical stem. Um, fracture coming down this way. Um, so it's the best view to evaluate the structure of the obturator ring, which you typically should see with a T-shaped fracture, which you're not really seeing well in this particular image, but on a T-shape, you're going to see that. On the iliac oblique, you're going to see disruption of the greater sciatic notch and um, sort of that posterior column component of your, of your transverse fracture and um, any subluxation of the femoral head. So in CT scans, the transverse component is usually vertically oriented on uh, some of the axial cuts. And um, if there's any vertical components, you're going to see them as shown um, uh, 
uh, in the uh, lower image, remember the T-shaped fracture has that vertical part that's coming down to split the obturator foramen. So um, you can also have a, um, a fracture that looks somewhere in between. And I told you that you know the T-shaped and anterior column posterior hemitransverse are a little bit similar, right? So there's a T-shaped on the left. Here's the anterior column posterior hemitransverse on the right. Um, in some ways, they act you know somewhat similar. The T-shaped acts a lot more like a like a real transverse fracture. So that transverse component is going to look a lot like if you just had a transverse fracture or a transverse posterior wall. Um, whereas the anterior column posterior hemitransverse typically has more displacement anteriorly. You don't have that similar type of uh, femoral head acting like you know it does with the transverse fracture. And these are almost always approached anteriorly as opposed to the T-shaped, you're going to potentially approach, you know, possibly anteriorly, possibly posteriorly, possibly combined approaches or a single extensile approach, depending on if you have a transtectal fracture, for example. And we'll, we'll get into this in um, some of the later videos. What about the associated both column fracture? Well, the definition of the associated both column fracture is the fracture where there's no continuity between the axial skeleton and the articular surface of the acetabulum. So it's typically very comminuted and it can be fairly complex. So this is the equivalent of the, you know, AO type, you know, periarticular type C fracture, right? Where the articular fragments are all dissociated from the shaft. In this case, the shaft is this sciatic buttress, so to speak. So when all your articular fragments are dissociated from that sciatic buttress, this area here, then potentially you have an associated both column fracture. So again, transverse fracture, a T-shaped fracture, transverse posterior, these all involve both columns, anterior column, posterior and transverse, but none of them are an associated both column fracture where all the articular fragments are dissociated from that sciatic buttress. So on the AP, you can see disruption of all six of the radiographic lines. Uh, the femoral head is often congruent with the roof. Now remember, the roof is a free-floating fragment now because all the fragments are dissociated from the sciatic buttress. Um, so the head can travel with that superior fragment as opposed to subluxing you know, completely. Um, uh, you may see an iliac wing fracture on the AP x-ray on the obturator oblique, this is where you will see the so-called spur sign. So the spur sign is a spike of the non-articular intact ilium. It basically represents where everything else belongs. So here's that spike. That's the so-called spur sign. What this means is that this stuff belongs here. Now, sometimes this, this, this portion of the ilium is like a little bit sprung loose this way, but you know, with everything reconstructed properly, this is this is kind of where you need to get everything to. What this means usually is that the head and all these fragments are all medialized, okay? And that's why that spur sign turns up. Now, you also could see secondary congruence. This is something you'd see on multiple views where because all the articular fragments are dissociated from the sciatic buttress, as opposed to all the other acetabulum fracture types, in this type, the fragments, the articular fragments can actually migrate with the head and maintain congruence because they're not tethered to the sciatic buttress anymore. So because they can migrate with the head through their capsular attachments, you can have a congruent joint, but the whole joint is probably going to be medialized. So that's called secondary congruence. And actually, remember, uh, we haven't talked about this as much yet, but in one of the indications for operative management is because of lack of congruity. So occasionally you could have secondary congruence with one of these associated both columns and potentially be able to treat it non-surgically. On the iliac oblique, you're going to see uh, displacement of the posterior column. You're going to see fractures going up into the ilium, which are commonly seen with these injury patterns. And on axial CT, quite a few things. Um, you may recognize that spur sign. Uh, the tip of it shown in that uh, gold arrow at the uh, level of the roof. Fractures are typically coronally oriented. Uh, you're going to look for marginal impaction, intraarticular fragments, SI joint injuries, etc.
So let's talk a little bit about fracture characteristics, a few things. So gall sign, the gall sign represents impaction of the supramedial acetabular roof. So it looks kind of like that gull, like a gull's wing in, a, in, a, in like a painting or a drawing. Uh, you'll see this sometimes with osteopenic bone uh, due to impaction. So, you know, the femoral head basically goes here, it impacts over here and you get that impaction of the, of the portion of the dome and sort of this gall sign. So if you see that in an elderly patient, um, oftentimes with these uh, anterior column or anterior wall type fracture patterns, that may be a poor prognostic sign and you can get early loss of reduction. Now, earlier I talked about marginal impaction. I try to show you like if this is your joint surface with marginal impaction, maybe the joint surface gets pushed all the way back to here. So here you can see this joint surface is supposed to be here and instead it's here right, shown in that blue arrow. So that's the impaction. It's like, a, again, like a tibial plateau depression. So this needs to be restored all the way back to actually probably more like here. The head is actually falling into the depression. So the joint surface probably has to be restored all the way to there. And you can see if you just leave that alone, even if you fix this wall fragment back, you're going to have like a little pothole there. Definitely seen better on CT scan. Incarcerated fragments. So these are sometimes you have a hip dislocation, you reduce it, and then you still see this the head is not concentrically reduced. And maybe it's because shown in that black arrow, there's still a, an incarcerated fragment. Um, so that's an example of that, and that may prevent the concentric reduction. I mentioned this earlier when we talked about um, transverse fractures and identifying uh, where the um, you know, transtectile fracture is compared to like juxtatectile. So another way to do this is called roof arc angles. Um, in this case, you measure this on all three views. Um, you draw that vertical line through the center of the acetabulum, then another one 45 degrees from that starting at the center of the acetabulum. And if the fracture falls within uh, the angle on any of these views, it's considered to be in the wheat bearing dome. Um, and that, that means you have more of a transtectal fracture. And it, it means that you have to certainly consider that, uh, you know, this is more of an indication for operative management because that weight bearing dome is important. Another um, important uh, radiographic uh, characteristic to consider are how uh, the joint looks under stress radiographs. So when you have small posterior wall fractures and you're not sure if that alone is an indication for surgery. One thing you may want to take into account is how stable it is under uh, dynamic conditions. So you put the patient on the operating table. You can see here there's an iliac, uh, I'm sorry, there's an obturator oblique view, which is what you look at to, to look at the posterior wall. And you can see that a flexed, a deducted, almost like going to try to dislocate the hip, and you then apply that stress. So you flex to 90 degrees, internally rotate. And then you assess for congruity and see if that thing is going to sublox. And if it does, you consider a positive stress radiograph, and maybe that posterior wall should be fixed if you know if it's unstable, the hip is unstable. All right, so we're going to pause there, and in our last portion of this slide deck in the fourth video, we're going to talk about CT evaluation of acetabulum fractures, and then we'll kind of wrap up with a summary uh, how to evaluate these.